Ladies and gentlemen, section 5.9, we're going to quickly chat about the last column on our reduction potential chart, which is that column with all those little voltage numbers. I want to go into a little bit of background about what those numbers mean and how they calculated them. None of this is testable, it's just a little bit of detail may help in the long run here. So first off, those numbers have nothing to do with current. Current is how many electrons are flowing at any given time. Okay? We are only going to be dealing with the word voltage. And voltage is, you know, the proper definition is the tendency for electrons to flow. If it has a high tendency to flow, you're going to have a high voltage. If you have a low tendency to flow, you're going to have a low voltage. It's like you're going to see in class. There's going to be a small little 9 volt battery, and then there's a massive car battery that's only 12 volts. Well, the size of that battery deals with current and how long it's going to last and how many electrons can it push out. But the voltage is almost the same because the same tendency for electrons to flow is the same. So when we calculate voltage in our cell, we're going to be looking at the difference in the voltages from one half reaction to the other. And I'd like to explain to you how that works. So you're going to remember that I asked you to highlight the middle half reaction on your chart. That middle half reaction is the H plus to H2 gas and it has a voltage of, of zero. The people who made this chart and came up with these voltages kept this as half of the reaction, as half of the elect uh, electrochemical cell. The other half of the electrochemical cell was every one of those half reactions one at a time. And if they recorded a positive voltage, they wrote it up top. A larger positive voltage, they wrote it up higher. A larger positive voltage, they wrote it up higher. And the opposite's also true. If they recorded a negative voltage, they wrote it down low. And decreasing um, number as it went down. So they pumped hydrogen gas through a tube over a platinum electrode. That platinum electrode is not part of the reaction. It just provides a surface area for a reaction to take place. And then they monitored the voltage compared to the other half reactions. Okay? Nothing too fancy there. So those voltages are from really, really big to really, really small. Really, really big voltage up top means it really wants to gain an electron. And a really, really small voltage in the other direction means it really wants to lose an electron. And what we need to do is find the overall voltage of the cell. Now there's a lot of blanks in your notes. You can jot this down and you can pause it if you want. But I, I don't think you're going to need to once we do once we do another example. So here's my first example. Very common question, typical battery in Chem 12. We've got nickel metal, that's just nickel solid, uh, with its appropriate ion, nickel plus two in a nitrate solution, and then we have iron metal, iron nitrate. We gotta remember, Leo is a hick jerk. So we have two parts, the nickel part and the iron part. The nickel half reaction, nickel plus two, is higher on the chart than Fe plus two. So it's going to react at the cathode. It's going to be the reaction at the cathode. So nickel plus two plus two electrons, nickel solid, that's the cathode reaction. And because this whole chart is in terms of reductions, and reduction takes place at the cathode, you simply copy down that voltage, negative 0.26. By default, the iron must be the anode reaction. It's going to lose two electrons to form Fe plus two. Well, now we're reading that chart in reverse. So we need to flip the sign on that. It's not going to be negative 0.45. That's for the reduction of Fe plus 2. We want the oxidation of Fe solid. So reading this chart backwards, we need to switch that sign to positive 0.45. Now, we simply add the two half reactions together, and we can simply add the voltages together. So negative 0.26 and positive 0.45 gives us positive 0.19. That's the overall cell voltage, 0.19. That's it. No real tricks there. Let's try another one. I have it all written out. This one, the electrons don't cancel off, so it's a little different. So let's just try one more. We have an aluminum half reaction and a lead half reaction. Looking up those things on the left side of your chart, the highest thing that we have on the left side is lead. The lowest is aluminum. So the lead plus two will gain the electrons first. That's going to be the cathode reaction. Copy it straight off your chart, copy the down the voltage exactly. Negative 0.13. By default, the aluminum solid is going to be the 
oxidation reaction. It's going to take place at the anode. And we're reading the chart in, in reverse, so you've got to switch the sign to positive 1.66. You're going to notice in this question, the electrons don't cancel off exactly, twos and threes. You've got to find the lowest common multiple, convert it to a six. So multiply the first one by three, the second one by two, add up the voltage, and you're done. In this next example, we're just throwing some theory at you. Nothing new here whatsoever. If I give you a, a battery made up of three, five, seven, ten things, the strongest battery with the greatest voltage is going to be with this, made out of species that are strong. And the farther you are away from each other on the chart, the stronger you're going to be. So if you have silver, zinc, and copper, and you want the largest voltage possible, you have to find the two that are the farthest away from each other. And if you look on your chart, the silver, the copper in the middle, and the zinc way down below, the silver and the zinc are the farthest away. They're going to give you the highest voltage possible. We're going to draw this out as a group tomorrow. We're going to label all the parts on this. It's going to be good review. If you want to copy some of it down now so you can do some discussing and sharing, that's totally fine. Okay. Feel free to pause it right here and move on. The opposite question can also be asked. If you want to find the lowest voltage, well, all you simply need to do now is find the two that are the closest together. That's it, the closest together. And everything about the electrochemical cell is going to remain the same. Here's where things get a little twisted. Every one of those numbers are at standard conditions. Every one of those numbers is at time zero, before the reaction even starts, when you have maximum amount of reactants and zero products. So if you have a copper-zinc cell, we're going back to that one, highest reaction is the cathode. So copper is a higher reaction, Zinc's the lower one. Switch the sign on the lower one, add them up, positive 1.10. As this reaction takes place, the amount of reactants go down and the amount of products go up. So as the reaction takes place, the tendency for the forward rate decreases. And as this reaction proceeds, the tendency for the reverse rate increases. Well, the reverse rate's a non-spontaneous reaction. So as the reactants go down and the products go up, the overall cell voltage is going to decrease. And it's going to decrease and decrease and decrease as it moves to the right and moves to the right and moves to the right. Eventually, the tendency to go forward is going to equal the tendency to go in reverse. And then the theoretical voltage of this battery is zero. There is no tendency for the reaction to flow, the electron to be created and lost, when the forward rate equals the reverse rate. So we say that's a type of equilibrium, when the tendency to go forward equals the tendency to go in reverse, and the voltage of the battery is zero. So any time a battery is in equilibrium, the voltage is zero. And that's where we are going to stop today, and we're going to continue the rest of these in some group discussions tomorrow. See you then.